Good evening, everyone. My name is Karina Christensen, and I'm honored and excited to welcome you here for an evening of celebration. We both look back at our school's incredible heritage, as well as look forward to the public health priorities for the future. 85 years later, Mike Bloomberg made a visionary investment, and we became the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, a name that we bear proudly. A hundred years ago, William Henry Welch stands in front of the Hopkins community at commencement. He announces what was until that moment a closely guarded secret. Hopkins had bested Harvard in its bid to launch an unprecedented experiment in public health education and research. The shape and form of this story will repeat itself again and again and again, from AIDS to Ebola, chronic heart disease to road safety, smallpox to water, waterborne illness. In all of these cases, the School of Public Health plays a major role in confronting these challenges and vindicates the school's reputation as the crown jewel of an institution devoted to doing big things. This is the school that did not redefine public health. It defined the study of public health. And of course, in this venture, we are so lucky, so fortunate, so blessed to have the support of our great alumnus and dear friend, Mike Bloomberg. When I left office back in 2013, people often asked me, uh, what was I the most proud of? And it's tough to come up with anything that is more satisfying to me than uh, the increase in life expectancy that Sapna mentioned. Uh, three years increase in life expectancy. In New York City, life expectancy is two years greater than the average across America. Uh, let me talk a little, uh, for a second about philanthropy and what we can do to be part of saving the world. Uh, some people wait until they die to give away their wealth, but I've never understood why you would deprive yourself of the chance to see all the good that money can do. And the chance to help others is one of life's great rewards and something my parents taught me at a very early age. I want to thank the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation as well. They've been an incredibly generous supporter of our work and our mission to improve the lives of women, children, and families around the world. We're grateful to all our donors. Every gift has an impact. But we're here tonight in large part because of the guidance and leadership of our alumna and dear friend, Margaret Kahn Himmelfarb. She has done so much over the last five years. I wonder if Margaret would stand up and, and be recognized. Okay. Public health is like the electric grid. No one notices it until the lights go out. Let's shed a little light onto what's next for the school. Another century of saving lives, millions at a time. I will protect health by empowering individual patients while passionately advocating for equal access to health and wellness for everyone. So what's next for me? I will save millions of lives working on large scale vaccine trials and global eradication efforts. So what's next for me? I hope to change paradigms in how we care for critically ill children in the intensive care unit and promote truly healing environments. So what's next for me? I will protect health and save lives by developing policies to reduce health inequalities, particularly related to child mortality in developing countries. Each one of you now holds a light. It's a symbolic gesture that we hope will inspire you to be part of our next 100 years. And in that spirit, we will continue the evening celebration with our afterglow. And I ask you, as we do that, to ponder what's next for you. Thanks for being part of our special evening and helping to celebrate our birthday. Good night. Thank you.